Awesome. Thanks for jumping on tonight, you guys, and being patient with me and my crazy hectic schedule. I really appreciate it. I sincerely hate it when I have people block time for me and I don't show up. I would never do that intentionally, so I truly apologize for that. And um, I want to go ahead and just get started really quick tonight. So what uh, the topic that we're talking about all week long is how to brand yourself. When we're all selling the same products, how can we differentiate ourselves online so that we can attract the people that we really want to work with, those people that we're going to really connect with and understand whether that's um, someone that's going to be a customer of ours or someone that's going to be a coach of ours. But I truly find the, that I gain the most pleasure from this business when I'm working with people where we just kind of understand and get each other. That doesn't mean that we have everything in common, but it just means that we kind of have the overall vision and the right things in common. So the way that you guys can start to attract those people is to start to brand yourselves. We're not Beachbody. We're not the products. We're so much more than that. In fact, the piece that really starts to elevate our business and attract our ideal people, our tribe of people, is when we really learn how to promote ourselves online um, in a way that really shines um, a light on who we are as people. Your brand is you. It's your personality. It's your likes. It's your dislikes. I'm sorry. Let me close my Facebook really quick. I forgot to do that before we started, and I don't want to hear a million dings. Okay. I think I got it. Cool. Um, so the way that you guys do that is by really turning your brand is you. It's your hobbies, your personalities, um, your funny little quirks, um, your, your history, your pain, your struggles, all of that put together. And the cool thing about that is that you guys don't necessarily have to be creative to have a strong brand. You just have to really get to know yourself. Um, and, and it's kind of a cool self-discovery process. I really think that after five years of coaching, I finally really understand who I am. I understand my personality type. I understand why certain things are a strength, a strength of mine. I understand why certain things are a weakness of mine. And I'm really now able to capitalize that and to pull that into my branding so that I can attract my tribe of people, those people that I love to work with. I call them my sisters. Um, lots of, my team is primarily, or at least my PS coaches, are primarily women because that's the type of person that I want to work with. Guys, I grew up with nine brothers. <laughs> I got my fill of like the dude's perspective all through growing up, especially being um, a military brat. My dad was Army and Special Forces. And so I grew up with you fall down the hill, you brush it off, rub some dirt on it, you're fine. Like just this, this very tough love surrounded by boys, constantly getting picked on. Remember when I woke, um, would wake up, I woke up one night and I was really sick and I woke up with toothpaste and hairspray in my toes. Like even when I was like deathly ill and vomiting my brains out, my brothers were still harassing and picking on me. You guys, can everybody hear me? She says she has video and no sound. Okay, but Haley has sound. Okay, try to come back in. Can someone just message Rachel in the comment? And hop off, and, yeah, hop off and hop back on. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So anyways, um, what I wanted to teach you guys is how to create a brand that really just kind of um, shines a light on who you are so you can attract those tribe of people that you wanna work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and click share my screen and jump right into my slides. And let me see if I can open up my chat box and see, yep, perfect. I can see that on the side here. So in case you guys are having any troubles, you can let me know. All right. So, I want to teach you guys how to brand yourself. But just in case you guys don't know who I am, my name is Andrea Crowder. I'm co-founder of Team Misfit Republic. I've been coaching for a little over five years um, now. I'm an army wife. When I started coaching, my husband had returned, um, just returned home from Afghanistan. We were 100 in a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, and trust me, that debt that debt was literally suffocating our family. I've always kind of been a creative and wanted to run my own business, but I was too scared. I didn't really know how to do that, and I really look at this business as kind of a business in a box. It really gave me the confidence to say, like, oh. I can just kind of personalize this, but Beachbody already did all the hard work for me. And I think that's such a cool, special thing that we're able to offer people. Those people that want to kind of dream bigger, those people that want to 
help people um, be creative in their own way, have unique offerings. It doesn't matter what um, your hobbies are or who you are. You can really take all of that and put it into your business to where it's a business that you love, a business that you want to show up for every single day. And that's why there's such a wide variety of coaches from every different different kind of background that have been able to find success with this business. Um, you know, we have people who come from being a firefighter or a nurse or a stay at home mom or a photographer or a hairstylist. I was a corporate event planner. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what your circumstances were. It doesn't matter what your resources were or are. It just matters that you infuse you into your business. You figure out who you want to help and then you do not stop. You just we're tirelessly on reaching out to that person, constantly looking for that person and attracting them to you or starting those new um, conversations and relationships so that you can build a business that lights you up and a business that you're really, really proud of. So since I started my business about two and a quarter years into it, I was able to walk away from my full-time job. We paid off that hundred thousand dollars worth of debt and we truly live a life that is beyond anything that I've ever imagined. It's not just the, things that we're able to buy, but it's the experiences and it's the level of peace that we're able to bring into our family. That's something that I never thought we'd be able to have. And beyond that, beyond the finances, it's um, how I've grown personally uh, so I can be a better mom and a better wife. It doesn't just affect the people that I meet online. It really does affect my household, my current environment, my friends, my family, because I'm just better. I get better every single day. The things that Beachbody puts into just our daily behaviors, as long as I continuously work on that, it doesn't just benefit my business. It benefits every single area of my life. And I just can't tell you how proud I am of myself for really not letting when, when things got hard in this business and I chose to keep going and I chose not to quit. I'm really proud of myself for that. I'm really proud that I didn't quit. I'm proud of the wife and the mom that I have become. I'm proud of all the people that I've been able to help and to serve. I'm proud of, um, even the people that I'll never even get to meet the people that will never have a courage, the courage to reach out to me. I'm really proud of what I know that I've been able to do for them because just because we'll never speak doesn't mean that I didn't make an impression on them. They could change their life in a really subtle or a really profound way. So just think about that as you guys are going through your business. The most important thing is have fun. In fact, I wanted to put a slide in here and I just didn't have time, but I spoke at the Platinum Edge this last weekend, and one of my favorite slides that I shared was, the journey should feel, write this down, the journey should feel the way you want the destination to feel. I'll say that again. The journey should feel the way you want the destination to feel. That's a quote from Danielle Laporte. She's an online entrepreneur. Um, I love her stuff. And... Um, I've been through many phases of my business, the struggle bus phase, and then the phase where things were really flowing beautifully. And when they were flowing beautifully for me, it was because I was having fun in the daily process. The nuts and the bolts of the business, I just found so much joy in them. I found joy in creating my own brand. I found joy in those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people where I was sewing into them. I found joy in those one-on-one -on -one mentoring calls with my team. I found joy in, um, learning how to Facebook live, even though that was like scary as hell in the beginning, I just found joy in the process. And when I was having fun, people could feel that. And it really just started shining a light on me. I had someone send me a personal message just the other day. And she said, I don't know how we became friends on Facebook, but I want to let you know out of all my friends, you and just a few other people are a light in my newsfeed. You guys think, I think probably because we see so much of each other, in our news feeds that maybe we're not doing anything special. But if you were not a coach and you didn't have a million coach friends, all the people that are following you that are not in our community, you're late for them. They see you as something different and as something special. If you're doing a good job, really highlighting who you are and the community that you're part of online. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. So let's talk about creating your burst, your personal brand and your, and culture. Ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? And I'll give you guys these slides um, afterwards. You don't have to write down all these questions, but write down what the answers that come to you um, as we're going through this. What do you want to be known for? If you didn't need the money, why would you still work this business? 
I know in the beginning, I really needed the money. We were $100,000 in debt living paycheck to paycheck. I needed the money, but I don't need the money anymore. So why do I still work just as hard, if not harder actually, five years in when I don't need the money as I did on day one when I did? It was because of the mission. The mission drove me, and this mission drives me on a Tuesday. Not just because I need rank or income or success club points, because I just wake up every day feeling like I need to reach at least one person because my mission is to teach women how to create physical and financial wealth, freedom and joy unapologetically. I get so tired of us as women constantly having to apologize for ourselves, apologize for wanting to make money, apologize for wanting to have careers, apologize for wanting to have nice things, apologize for anything. I'm just over it. I'm over it. I want to teach women how to live life unfiltered and unapologetically so that we can show up in the world in a bigger and more audacious way. That's my personal mission statement. You guys can take a screenshot or you guys can grab the slides in the beginning, but don't you dare copy my mission statement. Not because I'm afraid of someone copying me because I own this mission statement because it's in my heart. Not because it's trademarked or branded or anything like that, but because it's in my heart. It's in my DNA. My DNA wrote that mission statement. You guys need something where when you read it, your heart palpitates. I read that and like all of a sudden blood just starts surging through my whole body and it reminds me, this is why I show up on a Tuesday or a Monday for no reason, even if I don't need the rank, even if I don't need the income, even if I don't need the success club points, I still show up because this mission drives me every moment of every day. And when I continuously share this mission through social media, through my team pages, other people want to be a part of that. And eventually my team will go create their own mission statements, but initially they're going to latch on to that and they're going to want to be a part of it. And I'm going to attract people to that mission because they want to be a part of it too. I'm attracting them into my sisterhood. That's what I call it. So I want you guys as one of your assignments to write your own personal mission statement. Who do you want to help? Why? Why do you want to show up even if you didn't need the money? Okay. Now here's another fun assignment you guys can do, word association. So what do you want your brand to be associated with? For me, I love to elevate other people. I love, love, love to help people shine in their own ways. I don't need any more followers. I want partnership. I wanna be that person that lifts other people up into the spotlight. I've had enough spotlight. I want other people in that spotlight either with me or above me. I want to elevate people. Vision. I want people to know that I've got more planned than just what's up with Success Club in September. I've got a five-year, 10-year, 20-year plan. I'm not going anywhere. I have the long-term vision. When people join with me, they know that I'm, no matter what changes in their life, I'm here. I'm in it for the long haul. Freedom. I want people to create a life of freedom by their definition. My life of freedoms means I can get up and get on an airplane whenever I want to or not. I can say yes or no to anything that lights me up. Um, I can uh, be present for my family if my family needs help. Um, if I need finance, fin anything financially, I can do that. If you guys um, didn't know, I've kind of just started sharing this story, but um, I've been, my breast implants have been making me sick for six years. I didn't know it until just recently. My insurance will not cover the explant. And so I'm going to have to pay somewhat close to $10,000 out of pocket cash in order to heal myself. This business gave me the freedom to do that because I have vision. I didn't know that I was going to need this surgery five years ago when I started my business, but I knew that I wanted choice. No matter what came my way, I wanted choice. I wanted that freedom. Community, community is everything. This is what drives me and that's like a huge piece of my mission statement. I want a huge community of people that are just gonna make the world a better place with me and they're gonna do whatever brings them joy unapologetically. I wanna build that community. I wanna create that safe 
safe space for people to shine like that. I love the word disrupt because what we do is not normal. Number one, chasing your dreams unapologetically is not normal. Running an online business, especially network marketing, not normal. But I don't give a fudge. I forgot to tell you guys, if you have kids around, put in headphones. <laughs> I held myself back that one time. But I want to disrupt the norm. And I want to do it unapologetically. And I want to bring people along with me. Trust. I want people to know they can depend on me. And that's why I felt so horrible that I didn't show up for you guys when I told you that I would today. Because I want people to trust me. I want them to know that they can depend on me. And I normally work tirelessly and will literally sacrifice sleep. Clearly my body was saying like, F U B it's time to sleep. And that's why I missed my alarm clock this morning. But I'm the, usually the last person to go to sleep and I will definitely show up for my team at any time of the day. I want people to know that they can trust and depend on me. That doesn't mean that I don't take care of myself. And normally self-care is something very important to me. I do have good boundaries, but I like to create expectations. And when I say I'm going to show up and when I say I'm going to do something, people can usually depend on that. They know that I will. I want to empower people. I want to empower people to do beyond what I have done. And I want people to feel safe knowing that, that they can move beyond me and that I'm still going to celebrate them. And I want um, my brand to be associated with the word authentic. I want people to know like this is the real me. If you followed me online for a year and you met me face to face in person, I want you guys to see the same person. I don't want there to be a disconnect. So that's why I started swearing online because I realized if you met me in person within 10 seconds, the F word's gonna fall out of my face, guys. It's gonna. <laughs> It's just who I am and, and I'm unapologetic about it. And, and I think the reason that I don't care is because I like to disrupt the norm. I like to cause people to say, huh? And I really truly believe that like, I do have some, some kind of an, I have intention behind actually me swearing online because I want to teach people to focus on the overall message, not one insignificant detail. I use any kind of language to express myself and to get across a point, but I will never use language for the purposes of hate or bring the other people down. Like you will not hear me say to your face a cuss word that is gonna bring you down or cause hate, but I will use them to, to emphasize my message. And so I teach people that. Somebody actually called me out online um, last week because I did a Facebook Live, you guys might've seen it. Um, my team, um, had surprised me by one of my local coaches came and completely decorated my whole office. When I came home from New York, my office was covered in like pictures of my team and balloons and way too much cake to eat <laughs> by myself. And just like all these beautiful little mementos that just showed me like my team knows me. And it was just this special, like I was so overwhelmed that I just like popped on a Facebook live in the moment of feeling the feelings and probably like 80 F bombs came out of my mouth and my daughter was in the room with me and my kids know like they know who mommy is. I don't hide myself from anyone. My kids, I get, my kids get the same version of me as well. Um, and I, as soon as I got off, I looked at my daughter and I said, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm such a bad influence. I probably just said the F word a million times. And she looked at me and she said, mom, if being a bad influence looks like having friends like this, and you can bad influence me anytime. And I was like, holy shit. She got the message. The message was that I have this incredible community that I show up for and they show up for me. And this woman just had this like nasty little snide comment about swearing in front of my daughter. And I made sure to tell her all about herself too. <laughs> because my daughter got the message. And I just felt like, wow, that was like a really proud parenting moment for me. The people are always going to get that authentic version of me, whether you meet me online, whether you get on the phone with me, whether you run into me, you know, at Target, probably in the line of Starbucks line or something like that, or the office of pilot uh, aisle. So who are you and what are you a resource for or on besides Beachbody? So I'm going to list off some things about me 
And as you guys, if you associate with something, go ahead and write it down. Or if you think of something else for you personally, write it down too. So for me, I love office supplies. Um, office supplies. If you guys want to show me a good time, if you guys want to go on a date with me and just take me on long walks down the office supply aisle, like that gives me heart palpitations. I want to touch all the highlighters. I want to touch all the gel pens. Like <laughs> it is a serious situation for me. Um, Suri is like clearly listening to me. I have to sit on my phone when I do these things. Um, I'm a spiritual gangster. Now I don't use that in my branding PS because that is actually a brand, but I love associating with the words. Like so my spirituality is very, very important to me. I share that online. People know that about me. I love, love, love to travel. Clearly I've done it so much lately that I completely drove myself in exhaustion. So I need to learn how to say no a little bit more. Um, but I just want to see the world. And honestly, I would rather die exhausted having seen and done all the things that I want to do than live life saying like, dang, I wish I would have said yes to that. So sometimes I probably do overdo it. But again, I would still rather be exhausted than miss out on something. I have massive FOMO guys, which if you don't know what that means, it's fear of missing out. <laughs> so I do struggle with the word no a little bit. High performance tips and high performance health. Um, over the last five years, I've just really dedicated myself into learning, like, how can I be better? How can I be more productive? How can I um, reteach that? And how can I use health tips to help me be more focused and more productive in business or as a mom? Like, I have so many things that I want to do. I'm a massive overachiever. I love, 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 love to probably create too many things on, like, my to-do list for the day. But... Um, again, I like, I want to just be exhausted at the end of every day feeling like ah, I did stuff that matters. And so I have spent a lot of time learning, like, what can I do to keep my health up? What can I do to keep my focus, my energy, all of that stuff up. So I love to reshare stuff like that. Anytime I learn something for myself, I reshare that, um, comfortable fashion. Like I love to be fashionable, but I don't like to be uncomfortable. So unless it comes to my shoes, that's a different story. But like. Um, when I was in New York, I bought this like big, beautiful, like sex in the city, um, ask dress. And I woke up that morning and I was like, I do not want to wear that. <laughs> that doesn't sound comfortable to me. So I ended up in skinny jeans and like a cute outfit. And I was like, you know what? Like, I don't know why I bought that in the first place. Was it gorgeous? Would it have been like a really cool social media picture? Yeah. But that's not me. I didn't want to wake up and wear it. So I said, F it. And because I've built a business like this, I have the power to choose and, and not feel guilty, you know, about the fact that I bought something that I chose not to wear. I'll go resell it or whatever. But um, I love comfortable fashion. I love talking about marriage fails and successes. I've been married for 13 years. Not every day has been perfect. But I will say that the last probably like five, six years of my marriage have been a really special, beautiful relationship between me and my husband. It is one of my most prized, um, I can't call my marriage a possession because like you could lose something like that in any, at any moment. I never want to take that for granted, but, um, I love to share the things that we did wrong and the things that we did right with people. Now, currently, since I realized that breast implant illness was a thing, I had never heard of it before until very just recently. I talk a lot about that because I do believe that I went through this. And even though I don't believe God makes bad things happen, I do believe he can bring goodness to all of it. And so now I'm going to use that to share um, and, and educate other people. And you guys, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten private messages from people saying, I have also been doc to every single kind of doctor for years. And I have no idea what was wrong with me. Neither did they. And what a coincidence, all these health issues started after my implants. So that's a big, important part of like, I'm becoming a resource on that. I'm in the process, but I'm just learning and sharing. Hypoactive thyroid, um, women empowering women in community, self-care tips to avoid burnout. A couple years ago, I really overdid it in my business and I got all the way up to number 17 in the company, but I didn't have the system set up to, to maintain um, a business like that. And I really burnt myself out and I started resenting my business. And so I started learning how can I still be productive and take care of myself and not burn out. And then I reshare that. Um, I love taking my kids on individual dates. My kids are like my best friends. Like 
Yes, I'm that mom that definitely disciplines my kids, but I definitely have a close relationship with them too. So I love to talk about the fact that my kids are t a teenager and a teenager and, and how I maintain those relationships with them of honesty and a close relationship to where they trust me. I love talking about stuff like that. Um, I love home decor, especially when it comes to girl boss offices. So I talk about um, that quite a bit. Money mindset. I really had a crappy uh, mindset around money when I started my business and five years of working this business and learning how to replace that mindset with a, with more of a growth mindset. I love resharing that. And I'm totally that girl that I love doing beauty trials, but normally they turn into beauty fails. <laughs> I want so badly to be that girl that watches YouTube videos and figures out how to do like the highlighters and the cool like winged eyeliner. Guys, that's just not me. I'm never going to be that girl. So my beauty trials usually turn into beauty fails. So I love sharing that too. But I am very passionate about non-toxic beauty, teaching women about the fact that everything that we put onto our skin gets absorbed into our bloodstream and how we should be more aware of that so that we can take care of our bodies and have a long, healthy, happy life. So these are things that I've become a resource on besides Beachbody. But one little caveat is I want to, um, to remind you guys to be careful not to become too preachy because that's when we start to turn people off and lose them. Just be an educator. But if you come, I'm very passionate about certain things, especially like the non-toxic beauty. But if I become too preachy about it, you guys know, like look what happens when people become too preachy about politics. You lose people, they get lost in, in the details and they lose the message, right? So be careful of that. Okay, so this is my team branding guide. So we um, branded our team Misfit Republic um, a few years ago. We co, uh, I'm a co-founder of the team with uh, my um, coach, Joelle Cease. And um, we actually branded the team with a handful of our other uh, leaders at the time and we did this together and so we created a logo where um, number one we did seven different colors so that anybody could relate to it in fact we actually have a branding guide for the dudes too it's called mr. fit Republic <laughs> and just so everybody could feel like if you don't like pink choose the blue or the red or the green or whatever so everybody could just feel like they were part of it again community is something that's really really important to me um, I think having some kind of a sense of a brand um, and a team name is, is important because it helped. What happened was everybody signed on and everybody would create their own team name. So it was always a team of one. And there was no sense of community with that. So I started feeling like I was just a big party of one and I didn't want to feel that way anymore. I started this business because I became completely intoxicated by the company and by the um and by the community. And so I wanted something that pulled everybody together, something that everybody could feel like they took part ownership over. And eventually as my coaches have become leaders, they've gone off and they've rebranded and some of them have kept some of like the, the little pieces of the branding to feel like they're still kind of a part of like the mothership of the brand, you know what I mean? But um, we really wanted to give people a sense of where they could take you know, a slight customization of the brand and still feel like they were owners of it. It wasn't just me and Joelle. It was really the whole team. And as they became more confident in who they were, then they could go rebrand themselves. But if they never wanted to do that, they didn't have to. If they did want to do it right away, they could. There was, there's no rules, but I just wanted people to feel like immediately they were a part of something bigger than themselves. Again, I told you guys, I'm going to give you copies of these slides so that you can kind of check things out um, a little bit closer. Getting to know your ideal client, we're gonna talk about that this week as well, so I'm not gonna dive deep into that, but Tiny Devotions is a company that I'm a huge fan of because I know I am their ideal client. They sent me, um, I had ordered one of their Mala necklaces, and um, they had this little insert, this one right here, and I read this and I was like, oh my God, this is everything. Like my heart just like associated with every single word on this list. And it was like, wow, they really know their ideal client really well. And it is me, you know, talking about setting intentions, meditation, forgiveness, disconnect, legs up the wall, which I thought was really funny. If you don't understand that, like it's a great way to shake up your lymphatic system and, and detox. Um, Manifest your dreams, gypset. That's totally me. I love to get up and go. Um, 
coconut oil for everything, kale and avocado, just all of these things, every single word on here, I'm like, oh my God, this is a part of my everyday life. Like they really, really know and understand me. And I just felt so much more connected to their brand. So this could be a fun process for you guys is to create some like words or phrases that you feel like would really associate to your brand. And if it lights your heart up, as you start to use language like this in your posts, it's going to really associate with other people and they're going to feel more connected and build trust faster with you. So here's how you guys can kind of get started with branding yourselves, especially if you're not creative. Pinterest is the bomb. I love Pinterest, you guys, um, because if you get on and you just use a few keywords, you can get some really cool branding boards to start to give you inspiration. If you're like, I want to come up with a color scheme, um, come up with some like word association for my brand, come up with some fun fonts. This is a really fun process. And so if you just, what I did here is I went to Pinterest and I used the search term feminine branding board. And then I did the same thing for the men. I did masculine branding. And so this, the one in the center was one that came up for like the more masculine side. But you guys could look and see, obviously don't go copy anybody's branding, right? Because again, like it really needs to be you. But if you look at a color screen and you're like, yeah, that like, I really, really vibe with that. It's funny because people really connect with colors. They create a certain kind of energy for people who are calmer. You're going to see, um, you know, probably some like blues or yellows or greens for people who love energy. For me, like as soon as I see citrusy colors, uh, I get really excited. I love oranges and pinks and yellows and limes. Um, I, I just love a good citrusy color because it just, um, it I, I love the energy associated with it because I'm a very high energy individual. So think about who you are, what you connect with visually, and then start to create a brand around that. Um, and then other, if you guys go look at, um, I forgot to put this on here, but Defont, D-A-F-O-N-T, you guys can look um, up cool fonts there. And a little tip for you when it comes to fonts, I like to choose two fonts that I use consistently. So I use one that's a little bit more of a script font. Um, so if you guys look uh, right here on the left and it says green clean, the one in the green clean is more like a script font. And then the words around it are a, um, it's called a sans serif font. That doesn't mean, have to mean anything to you, but all it means is like, for example, Arial, most people know the font Arial, that's a sans serif font. It doesn't have like those little curly cues, whereas Times New Roman has like the little um, curly cues um, that go off the side of it. So choose like a script font and then one that's like either a little bit more modern, but just complements it. You don't want to overuse like two different script fonts. You just want something that's going to complement each other. And if you guys um, use the, um, the app Rana, R-H-O-N-N-A on your phone, they uh, will pair fonts together for you which is really cool. So if you guys want something just simple and you're constantly using your mobile device for your business, like most of us are, Rana is a great app to invest into because they give you pairings of different fonts that already go well together. So if you're like, I'm not creative, this just isn't my jam, and you start to get stressed about it, don't get stressed about it. Just find the resources that will show you how to do that for you. It's called Rana, R-H-O-N-N-A. Cool. Okay, so Pinterest could be a fun little assignment, but I will give you guys a rule, set a timer on your clock. If you know yourself and you know like you're gonna get lost in Pinterest and you're gonna waste too much of your business hours there, set a timer for yourself for like 30 minutes just to go through, type in a few keywords, um, and then start looking for some brand models to help start stirring some um, creativity for you. So I'm gonna give you guys some coaches that you can follow. Um, and think about these coaches are cool because they're all very different, but they're all successful. So, and the tip that I got at the Platinum Edge today from Megan Ewaltson was such a cool tip because she said, find someone who's like three to six months ahead of where you are and be inspired by them. Because if you look at a coach who's been doing this for, you know, two, three, four, five years and you're a brand new coach and you, it, it can start to feel defeating, can't it? 
you know, so you can look at someone and you think, oh, I'm just never going to look like that. You guys, my brand looked like crap when I started. It looked like butt. <laughs> it was awful. Facebook reminds me of that every single day when it shows me like my past history of what I posted, you know, when I started my business. So find someone who's a new ish coach, but maybe like three, six, nine months. I wouldn't go too much far ahead of that. And use them as kind of a model as far as where you want to aspire to be in your business you know, in like three, six, nine months from now, that way it doesn't start to feel overwhelming and feel like, you know, if you looked at my website right now, you guys, my very first website was homemade and ridiculous. In fact, I'll post it in the group so you guys can see, I'll post a screenshot. It was awful. I've redone my website because I do like to blog three times. And the last time I hired somebody really, really good because I was able to take some of my, the money I made in my business and invest it back into my business. So if a brand new coach looked at my website, they're just going to be like, I can never do that. I paid good money for it. There's a reason that it looks great. I hired good people. Um, but you know, when I very first started, my website was crap. <laughs> it was awful. So I want to show you guys kind of like the, um, the process or the evolution of my brand. And you guys will see that it took me five years to get here. So be careful about starting to compare yourself. And I do this too. I look at people, I look at Jen Richardson and I should stop looking at her stuff guys. Cause every time I do, I'm like, I suck. I'm never going to be as good as Jen. She's always so like ahead of the curve and creative, like, <laughs> or Katie or Chelsea Pearson. I'm just like, Oh, they're so bad. <laughs> And then I start to feel bad about myself. So if you guys have people like that, where <laughs> I love those girls to death, they're some of like my best friends, but, um, I have to be careful to not look at other people's stuff too much because it starts to make me feel bad and I don't want to feel that way. So the more that I look at my stuff and own who I am, the better I do in my business. Because if I get too distracted with shiny objects of people who are doing stuff differently and I get into that comparison mode. I lose track of who I am and what I'm good at. And I want you guys to be very careful of that. So I'm going to give you guys a few different people where you can just look at all of these and look how different they are and, and just get a sense of like, there's no one right answer. The, the only right answer is that you infuse all of you and your personality into your business. So Noelle Bressler is a leader on my team um, and she has a blog called Third Day Hair. She had that before coming into the business um, where she talks a lot about fashion. She has like all different kinds of stuff in there, but really the, the site was created um, because she, like her like heart and soul is in fashion. Um, and she's the founder of the Messy Mom Movement where she just owns the fact that she's like a, such an imperfect mom and she created a cool community online of other messy moms. Um, Tulin Emery, who I just had the pleasure of meeting, um, at the Platinum Edge this last weekend, and she did a phenomenal presentation on, on branding. And she talked about the fact that she branded herself as a plus size fitness motivator. Um, and she really specifically works with women who are plus size, who have PCOS or have hypoactive thyroid. Those are the people that she targets because that's what she can relate to. But she said, be very, very careful because if you're a plus size, that doesn't mean you go out and brand yourself as a plus size fitness motivator just because that's what she did and that's working for them. It's not about the plus size. It's about who are you? Who are you? What are some words that you can associate with yourself so you can start to target the right people who have struggled the way that you struggle or who are struggling the way that you've struggled in the past? Angie Belmar um, is the, she, she's branded as skinny to strong. She does, so she doesn't have a major weight loss um, transformation story. And she's also a Disney freak. I love Angie's branding, but I'm not a Disney freak. And I remember having this moment where I'm like, if only I loved Disney, so I'd be as good as Angie because she recruits like a million people a month. If only you guys, I'm so guilty. I do this too. And I know, I know that everybody goes through those moments of comparison of thinking like, if only I was a Disney freak so that I could be successful like Angie. No, it doesn't work that way. If only you are more you and your business, then you'll be successful like them. They just took the parts of them and really owned them and created their brand around that. Mindy Winder is all about organic living, natural mama. She um, has a, an autistic child. So she talks a lot about that on online and that's her 
different ways of being of um, connecting with people and associating with new people. Jacqueline Hughes, she's a military wife. She loves yoga. Oh my God, her Instagram is just like insanely gorgeous. And I'm just like, again, I'll never look, have an Instagram like that because I don't love yoga like that. Would I love to have such a beautiful news feed of like yoga poses? Yes. Am I ever going to take the time to learn yoga and like associate my brand with it? No, that's not who I am. Like I'll do yoga, but like probably my branding would be like, what I think I look like and what I actually look like pictures. <laughs> I'm totally like that weird, awkward giraffe when I try to do, you know, fitness poses and stuff like that. I'm a hundred percent awkward giraffe. Not like Jacqueline where she looks like a freaking Yogi bottle. Um, Jessica Pasola, she's a firefighter's wife. She's a worship director. She's a mom. She's pregnant right now. Um, Sarah Beasley, she's a stay at home mom turned work at home mom. She was on people. Um, she was a people cover girl. So you guys can check out her brand on Instagram. Megan Smith, um, she brands herself as the happiness seeker. She's also a toddler mom. These are all things that like, who are you guys? It doesn't have to be life-changing or crazy creative or any of that, just pick a few words that you can associate with yourself. So when they come across your Facebook page or when they come across your Instagram feed or wherever, whatever platform that you use, that they're like, oh, me too. That's the point, guys. You want it to be super clear about who you are and what you love, what you're all about, so people can either look at your brand and say, oh, me too, and they can follow you, or they can say, oh, not me, and they won't follow you, right? You guys really want, you want to turn people away because you're not going to be able to connect with them and serve them if they can't really vibe with you. So that's why it's important to kind of start figuring out who are you, and you can just use simple words like twin mom or military spouse or hairstylist turned um, fitness inspirer. What's that a word? Yeah, inspirer. <laughs> Hang with me, guys. <laughs> Maybe you lost 100 pounds. Maybe you love football. Maybe you're a cheer mom or dad. I was thinking as I wrote that, I'm like, how cute would it be to see a dude put like you're a cheer dad? Like, I think you would really connect with other people. Like, other dads who are super proud of their kids who are just doing cool shit in the world, right? Like, I haven't seen enough of that. So if you're a guy listening to this or listening to the recording and you have kids who are like in cheer or dance or, you know, football or soccer, anything like that, whatever their passions are. And like, I would love to see like a dance dad. <laughs> that would be so cool. Maybe there already is and I just haven't come across them because I'm not their ideal market. Um, maybe you love horses. Maybe you love hiking or mountain climbing. It doesn't matter guys. Maybe you love scrapbooking. It really doesn't matter. If you guys are a master scrapbooker, -er, <laughs> I'm going to lose it today. guys. <laughs> like, I can't even, my English maker is broken, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Who are you? Pick maybe three things and start to really associate, put them in your, um, your bio on your different um, social media platforms so that when people look and they're new people that want to decide, am I going to follow this person and connect with them or not? You guys are going to either build a me too or a not me, which is the whole point, right? Cool. Okay. So if you guys were an entrepreneur Academy, the original one from last year, Chelsea Pearson created this cool, like, video and photo editing workshop, but what she did was put it into this Google folder where she gave you a list of all of her favorite um, apps and photo editing tools and stuff like that. So if you guys want to be a 100% mobile business, and I will tell you guys something that Mari Smith taught us this last weekend. She was um, at the Platinum Edge, and she said that 90% of people are accessing Facebook through mobile devices. And I say that because I've seen a couple people just recently in my newsfeed where they've posted pictures that they probably created on their um, computer and they could see them just fine. But when I looked at them at, on my phone, like the words blended into the background um, and I couldn't read it unless I clicked on it and unless I zoomed in. And unless somebody really loves you, unless they are like a die hard fan of yours, they're not going to click in and they're not going to zoom. So simple is always better. Less is more. If you guys 
And I challenge you guys not to put a lot of words on backgrounds unless you either brighten the background or darken the background to where the words pop. But always do a mobile test before you post. Check, out, check it out on your phone, and if, people, and if it's legible on your phone, then post. But if it's not legible on your phone, don't post. 80, I think it was like 80 or 82% of people have never accessed on their desktop. So people are almost getting towards like 100% mobile, okay? So, um, and you guys know that because for the person who's not an entrepreneur, where are they checking their social media accounts? They're probably sitting on their couch at nighttime or, you know, sitting in line, you know, at Starbucks or something like that. I'm always on my mobile when I'm standing in line anywhere. Um, probably not something I should be super proud of, but it is what it is. Um, but I, so that's where I'm checking it is I'm always on my mobile when I'm checking my newsfeed. So if you guys, if it doesn't pass the mobile test, don't post, please, please, please. And I'm telling you guys that I'm on like the search right now. I'm on like the hunt for people who are posting text on top of backgrounds that blend together and I will find you and I will message you and I will tell you all about yourself because then I know you were not on this branding webinar tonight. And I'm gonna make sure that you guys know that you are doing yourself a disservice. You're wasting your time even creating the image because people aren't gonna even look at it. Okay, so here's your assignment for tonight. I want you to create your branding board and the branding board is, let me go back. This is your branding board. So pick some fonts and some color schemes. And then also I want you to pick some word associations. Pick at least three words like this. Who are you? You're like a twin mom or a cheer dad or for me like, um, you know, uh, spiritual girl is how I run myself on, um, on Instagram. Um, so pick three different terms that you can associate. Who's writing on my screen? <laughs> Who's doing that? I don't even know how you guys are doing that. Someone's fucking with me right now. <laughs> Someone's kid is watching this and they're not watching. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. Now, shit, how do I remove that? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we're just going to go with the flow. Create your branding board and three different word associations that you want to be um, that kind of describe a little... Um, blurb about who you are so when people connect with you online they can either build a me too or a not me and I want you guys to post that into the entrepreneur Academy group but I don't want you to post as a new post I don't even think you guys can I think you'll have to post underneath um, you can do post it underneath the I'm sorry post that I did this morning um, so that you guys can so that we can see everybody's branding board if you guys can do that tonight I know some of you guys are on East Coast and it's probably almost 10 o'clock for you guys um, Post it tonight, but otherwise um, do it by tomorrow I will tell you guys one of my productivity tips is when I'm in the moment and I feel inspired That's when I get shit done I don't wait until this other time because I may not feel inspired and I tend to get more work done in the moment of inspiration than not if you guys are excited about this and you're like, oh, I'm feeling inspired, the wheels are turning, you're kind of feeling creative, just spend an extra 20, 30 minutes on this right now and just get some stuff done. Yes, Christy's excited. Okay, do you guys have any questions? I think that was my last, oh no. I had one quote for you. It's my quote was, you can have all the dreams and goals in the world, but if you don't take action, that's all they will ever be. I want to know who drew on my screen. <laughs> Someone's kid is messing with me. I just know it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click rec um, stop the recording here, but I'm going to stay and answer questions if you guys have any questions.